Here we go. Great. Thank you, Liz. You're welcome. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to see all of you here today. We've got a room filled with exciting librarians. Um, ready to get 2024 Tuesdays with CKLS off to a good start. Um, we did not have a session in January because we all stayed home because it was snowing all over central Kansas, um, but that has been uh, rescheduled for a little bit later this spring, and we will share that with you um, before the day's out today. Um, our guests today are the recipients of the ARSL conference grant last September, I think it was. And I'm going to put their names here in the chat. And Gail, will you start with some introductions? Yes, I'll be glad to. Um, we had uh, nine available scholarships and um, awarded nine, but one person needed to back out at the last minute because they were getting the HVAC in their library replaced and needed to be there for that. But we have Katrina Sorrell from the Belleville Public Library, Lindsay Kopska from the Frank Carlson Library, Danae Stone from the Barnard Library in La Crosse, Haley Huddleston is the teen librarian at the Great Bend Public Library, Karen LaPierre from the Hoisington Public Library, Ashley Roth from the Kerwin City Library, Angela Heisterman from Scandia City Library, and Rami Schulteis from the Sylvan Grove Public Library. And thank you for joining us. Um, we submitted to these participants a um, list of questions and uh, we are gonna get started. Contestants, <laughs> um, librarians, feel free to take this in a different way. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have time for free exchange as well, but um, the questions, the first one is, tell us one thing you learned at conference that you have done or will do at your library. Karen, go ahead. Whoops, Karen, you're muted. Um, one of the first, th I really enjoyed the conference. It was really nice to get to see people um, that I um, had never met before. And it was very encouraging. Um, sometimes it gets lonely in the small libraries. Mm -hmm. So having um, the conference was really a fun event for me. I stayed with my daughter, so I got to see her too. So that was fun. But um, I think that I did, and I, I, I'm holding up one. The best idea that I got that was um, relatively easy to implement in my library was um, literacy kits. And um, we bought some games um, and they recommended we get those on Amazon or at the dollar store or um, Walmart, but quality games that would withhold some wear and tear. And each one has three books around a theme and so um, we got the Dalex bags uh, also off of Amazon and they're high quality, they last, um, they're durable, you can see what's in there. And so um, they can check out the whole bag. And so they've been very popular. We have 12 bags now. And so that's um, probably the best thing that I um, learned at the um, conference. Um, you know, they told us, they recommended these bags and and how to do it. And I think that was very helpful for me. Karen, what are some of the titles that you have? I saw that was looks like a Pete the Cat. Yes, um, we, named, we named each one. We tried to think of something snazzy for each one. Um, but I think this is this one's just Pete the Cat. You know, we have hiss for snakes and that type of thing. So we tried to, to think of something creative for each kit. But um, this one is just Pete the Cat. Very fun. Thank you. Anybody else? You can just unmute yourself and start talking, or you can raise your hand if that's what you'd like to do. For me, uh, the, one of the things that I learned is more that I need to listen more to my community and see what they want to do. And then being a new director, uh, use more of my community resources. And 
some of the one of the panels I led to gave me ideas of what resources I should use. What's an example of that? Uh, our local uh, River Valley Extension District, which is something I never thought of, and all the programs that they'll do, and they'll come to the library. It's something we haven't done that here in Scandia for years. Excellent, excellent. That's exciting. Don't make me call on you, <laughs> Lindsay. Cup C. <laughs> yes, sorry, um, and I apologize for not having a webcam, but um, one of the things um, that I took away was something we're actively doing right now in our library, which is um, utilizing what you currently have to revitalize or revamp your space um, to make it more user friendly, more browsable, um, and with intention. So um, the 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 session that I went to, they talked about, it was a library, I think out of Washington state, and they were in what was their fire station that then was given to the library and how they were trying to work around also having one big room and try and do that in a safe way for their patrons. And we are kind of doing that here at the Frank Carlson library and trying to figure out, okay, this is, we have all of this stuff. How can we use it to make our space, um, utilize the most floor space that we have? Um, so that was that was very insightful for us. That's exciting. They did a pretty big weed last year and they're borrowing the stack movers from CKLS and they're gonna be moving shelves around. I really look forward to seeing more of that project. Um, Ashley. So one thing that I absolutely loved um, was the book bundles and how to get our circulation stats up. <clears throat> I mean, I have one little girl that does that for us very well, but to get others involved, we did like a 12 days of Christmas book bundle and offered those to the community. And those were such a hit. I had volunteers come in and help wrap the books. So they didn't know what they were getting and they got to unwrap a new book each day. So that was a huge hit. And we're going to try to do more of those throughout the year as well. And so did you have to buy a lot of things for your collection? To do no, this? we just used what we had. Wonderful. And we kind of got an idea from the parents of what the kiddos like to read. And we just kind of put their bundles together let, that way. Awesome. Did the parents sign up ahead of time? Yes. Oh, Patty, our idea is very exciting. It's perfect for all these things. Great. Who else would like to um, answer? Ramey. Um, I my favorite session was a cheap gates guide to increasing circulation, and they talked about circulating things in your library. And I was working with uh, a Lincoln County seed grant at the time, and with that seed grant, I bought a telescope, I bought mini microscopes that will circulate. Um, now the good folks at CKLS are going to help me write a policy <laughs> on circulating things. And I have also started adding our puzzles, our games, our things like that, just so they are available for people. That's it's going to be amazing. When you um, circulate your uh, telescope and your little microphones, will those be, um, uh, oh, we got a glimpse there. Um, will those be available to any patrons in CKLS? Um, eventually, yes. Um, for this summer, I'm going to put them at local availability only, unless you want to drive to the library and pick them up. Mm -hmm. And when I get more confident about circulating, they will probably go out. And when I learn the ins and outs of the telescope and things like that. Awesome. So that's an example of something that she's going to make available eventually, but she doesn't, she's not confident about sending it through the courier and I don't blame her. She, you'll need to go to the library and they can use their library card there. Yes. That's exciting. How about Danae? I haven't implemented this yet. I'm, but one of the things that I really enjoyed was um, how to do escape rooms in your 
library and I had never even I know well I'm a new librarian as well so I haven't been um around for that long but some libraries already do this but um I thought that was really neat and what a fun way to get maybe younger not necessarily even teenagers Mm -hmm. maybe even that 20 year old mm -hmm. escape rooms and you really don't have to again you can use what you already have and um I know that so um, I haven't implemented that yet but I've got a plan to I know that the Great Bend Library has done some um they've done teams or uh different age groups so you can um you can uh, reach out to them and they'll have some ideas. Um, Ashley, no, not Ashley. Haley is um, recovering or she has a cold and she says she will um, type her answers in chat. Thank you, Haley. We wish we could see your pretty self, but I know how that is. Um, you go ahead and let's see what you've got. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'll read it out loud. I had learned about the ACES, A-C-E-S quiz in creating youth opportunities, the library as su a support for youth at risk of incarceration panel. The purpose of the quiz is to help the person taking it to identify the sources of trauma that they might not even have considered that continue to affect them as adults. I've talked to our director about looking into it more and taking it with staff, keeping their results anonymous, of course. We hope that the results will give us some insight into trauma-informed interactions with our patrons. From the homepage, researchers determined that 10 specific traumatic childhood experiences or ACEs could be linked to a higher likelihood of health challenges later in life and that the likelihood of these negative effects increased with the number of aces a child experienced oh i think if we're all not clicking away on that link that's really interesting it's taking what you've experienced as a as a child and learning how to be more empathetic with your patrons and things that might happen with them. Oh, Angel, who do I ask for in Great Bend for info on escape rooms? I bet you can probably email anybody there and they'd be glad to help you. Oh, Haley and Aaron, yes. Um, who else is on our panel? Um, I'm thinking Katrina might be. Are you? Um, well, yes, you are. Let's hear from you, Katrina. Um, well, I went to one, um, on friends of the library and learned, um, sometimes my friends, they weren't, um, money. I wasn't getting a lot from the friends. So I brought them the 80, 20 rule. So we started to implement that and explain to them, you know, what that was. Did you say the 80, 20 rule? Yes. Where... Mm -hmm. The money that the library, they um, get from like fundraising, 80% will go to the library and the friends keep 20%. So mm -hmm. I felt like that was a good rule of thumb to have too when we were trying to decide how much, when the friends were trying to decide how much money to give to the library. So I was able to take that back to them along with um, doing an MOU. Mm -hmm. With the friends. Yes, with the friends. Um, I was also in the library spaces one, so that's kind of um, spinning, have wheels spinning in my head on how I can move things around. Um, so that will, of course, be a longer project uh, too. Um, I was also in the community involvement one, and um, I'm hoping this summer we can do this. They had... I can't remember which library it was. They had a, a representative come and present like a grand prize to one of the readers that won. So I thought maybe that could be something we could do is do a big giveaway and have someone in our community come and present the prize. So, That's a great idea. Um, and then another thing, just 
especially with this conference, meeting people from out of state. It was so fun to hear um, what their libraries were like and the differences um, and getting to know um, what they do. So, Have I missed anyone? No, I think we've heard from everyone. Okay, this will be a fun one. The second question that I asked them to think on and reflect on was, Tell us one thing that you really loved and would love to try, but you don't think you can do it at your library. Karen? Um, I attended one session where they suggest uh, getting um, snacks from um, that are about to expire um, and have a food, um, a food time for children. Um, get snacks from the local grocery store and um, give those out for the We do have, even in Hoisington, we do have some families that yes. um, are, are food sensitive and so forth. And so I did not implement that, um, but that I did think that was a really good idea. We, we don't have a good space for it. All our spaces are carpeted and, um, it, we just don't really seem to have the space for it, but I really did like that idea and we did talk about implementing that. One of the things you might think about is looking for a space elsewhere. Mm. That might work. See if you can okay. find a partner and um, over at the rec center, I'll bet they don't have carpet everywhere. That might be one spot where you could spearhead it and just do it somewhere else. Mm. I like that idea. Who's up next? I haven't, um, something I'd like to try and I, I am going to implement it. I just haven't found the right thing yet, but the library of things that people do, but I don't want to just get random stuff. I want to really find out what my people need or would use, or there's lots of good ideas and there's lots of, um, we heard from somebody who was talking about doing like a Thai, um, yes, Thai library basically. So if Neck some if a kid needs to dress up or a, mm -hmm. a, somebody has a job interview or something, they could just come and uh, get a tie from the library. So there's lots of different ideas that I thought were good. I am just still trying to feel out our people to see what would be the most beneficial to them. I don't want to just waste money or space with something they won't use. I can't keep it to myself, Patty. Um, one of the sessions we're going to have during technology week will be about using Google Forms for things like polling your community for questions. So we're excited. Um, Haley from Great Bend says there was a really fun demo session for a library podcast. She says, now I love a podcast. I listen to one or more every day, it seems. Though the children's services librarian and I agree, it would be so much fun as a way to promote the library and even get patrons involved. Sadly, the time required to produce a podcast is a big obstacle with the programming we already have going on. Ooh, I agree. Hmm. I wonder if there's any way that you could work with your local radio station and just do a five minute spot once a month about the things that are going on. And that way they're doing all the work, they have the equipment um, and it would be a community spotlight that might work. And then I, I know that there's, what is it? They have the mm, giveaways and things like that. Those radio stations, Patty. You Gail muted. always says, Gail always says that um, when you when you start something new or when you buy a new book, mm. you have to have at least five people that are going to be impacted by that. And so you have some some great ideas out there. But one of the first things that I would recommend you do is who can you think of those five people that are going to be impacted by that idea? Because you know Gail's right. We go to conference and we get all these great things, but you know, I love the idea of the podcast. Who are you going to be, who are you going to guarantee your five listeners if you put that kind of time into it? So those are some aspects that you do have to think about before you embarked on 
a, a huge time taker or a huge money taker. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I often say is um, it's exciting to think about what you're going to take on, but what are you going to stop now so that you have that time? Who's up next? Oh, Bramie, you're muted. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay. There was so many fun ideas for youth programming and STEM classes and all the fun things. My brain pretty much exploded with happiness, but my reality is I I need to figure out how to work it into the, some of the program I'm already doing because being a one-person library. Um, the other thing I want to really pursue is maybe some kind of seed exchange, not having it permanent, but maybe just a one-day or a one-week event. There was just so many good ideas. There were one of the things that... I I, I attend conferences, and so I'm not sure if I remember, but um, even a seed exchange is to have people do starts, and then you you exchange the starts of things, too, which is right. That gets them going along. That's exciting as well. Open oh, Lindsay says, my library board president, all caps, love the idea of a seed library. Yes. Yes. Ashley, go ahead. So my biggest thing, I would love to do more programming, but it is very hard for me with the amount of hours that I do mm -hmm. work. So trying to get volunteers to help me do those things is what I'm I'm trying to work towards so we can get more programming through the library. Well, one of the things that I've often thought is that even though you know we are all small independent libraries, um, but we tend to focus in a vacuum or in a silo. And I wonder if you went together with several librarians in your area mm -hmm. and um, made a programming series where uh, one month someone else is doing it, the next month someone else is doing it, and then you're doing it, but because you're kind of working together, you all get credit for everyone that attends and if it's not too far away, your patrons will go back and forth. Yeah. And, and we are doing some of that with Agra this summer. Awesome. So. That's a good way to get a start. Yes. Yes. Very good. Lindsay, go ahead. Um. Okay. So... I, I, I'll be honest, I have a terrible habit of if my brain says that's probably not likely, I just kind of delete it. Um, but there was a resource that I went to a session for, and I probably won't implement it, but I thought it was really cool. Um, it's called uh, Teaching Books, and it's a resource database that was built to benefit school and public libraries. And basically what you can do with this resource is it allows you to both diversify your collection as well as give you recommendations. Um, so like if you have like, say, The Hunger Games, it can give you recommendations on books that are similar, but also books that are similar with more diverse representation. Mm -hmm. um, and it they said that it was really great for building collection, for building displays, book bundles. Um, it just, it sounded like a very, really interesting resource, but it is a subscription-based resource. So obviously funding there is a factor. What was the title again? Uh, teaching Books. I can put it in the chat too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that does sound cool. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I thought that would be a really interesting resource, but like I said, probably not something we would implement anytime soon. Well, and, and this is the right place because when I sent out a question about dial a story, I wondered if anybody was using it. Hard, I haven't gotten any yeses back, but I at CKLS have more brokerage power for funding, but also for um, 
trying to get uh, get things like this for libraries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I one more thing before I get off. I will say though that um, Michael showed us here at the library um, how the patrons catalog has a novelist feature, which if none of you, if some of you haven't checked that out, check that out. When you like look up a book in the catalog, um, it can also recommend other authors and novels of similar types. So in a way, we already have something similar to that built in, which I'm very grateful for. And we have been using it a lot since we learned about it. Thank you. You're welcome. I love novelist. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any other conference attendees? Okay, share the best thing you learned at conference. Lindsay, your hand is still up. <laughs> and I'm happy to talk again. I'm actually really excited about this one. Go so ahead. I went to, um, and I'm, sh I'm pretty sure a couple other attendants did too, but I went to the program about the Library of Things um, that's already been mentioned. Uh, the, the two things that I took away from that particular session that I got really excited about was... Um, the library, the Missouri's hosting library's uh, response to the subscription, paid subscription uh, boxes that people get in the mail uh, was a library subscription box. Um, and so they basically had created a form. Patrons could fill it out saying, I'm interested in these genres, in these types of books. I want this many books. And then each month, library staff would then use that as a reader's advisory guide to then pick books out of their collection, mm -hmm. bundle them up and then check them out to that patron for like an extended period of time. Yes. Um, I loved that idea. I think that's a very versatile, very accessible program and service to start because um, mm -hmm. you can use just bags or boxes or anything like that to, to disseminate. Uh, the other thing I really liked was a standing author reservation service. Uh, which is kind of a similar thing, but instead of it being like reader's advisory, it is, I really like this author that you usually purchase. Can I be on the wait list for it as soon as that new book comes out? Um, and I really liked that idea too. And so that's, those are two things that we would like to implement in our library. Um, so I really enjoyed those ideas. That's using, um, using the tools you have to create what looks like a very specialized and customized service for your patrons. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to share the best thing you learned at conference? Karen. I think how similar um, we all are. Cause I, you know, I sat at a different table at each meal and um, we all shared, you know, what was going on in our libraries and you know we had some ideas even from you know the small little library that um the others shared that they were having issues with um so it was it was just good at meals to share and and to know that um everybody you know is facing the same issues with tweens mm -hmm. and um you know um <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just a constant thing with tweens. So um, it was just really good to hear all of that, I think, and, and share with those people. Well, and there's also chocolate desserts, too. That's always good. <laughs> that might not be the very best thing, but some days it feels like it. Um, one of the things that I heard from a couple of librarians is that one of the best things they learned is that um, they have CKLS and around the states, you know, because there are librarians from every state, they don't have anything like that. They're truly out there on their own. Um, I heard that from a lot of people this time, which was, which was, um, which was nice to hear. Who else learned something amazing? Oh, okay. We got... have a lot of kids come in after school and that was, um, one topic, um, she talked about how she interacted with the kids. And so we've started doing like a riddle or a joke of the day, just trying to interact with the kids that come in and um, get to know them better um, and kind of entertain them just a little bit more. <laughs> um, this grandma copies the jokes of the day in libraries that I see and, and texts them to my grandchildren and they think I'm a hoot. Um, 
and I don't, you know, I don't come up with jokes. Okay. From Haley, I learned about using the most generous interpretation in situations where problematic patrons. And she said, honestly, outside of work in conflicts, this phrase means you ask, how can I interpret this behavior in the most generous way possible? Not to excuse the behavior, but as a way to understand the rest of the problem and see the person beneath it. We have to remember that the situation could be a patron just having a hard day, and it could even be a good librarian having a bad day. It's easy to jump to conclusions, I'd lost my place, um, or defensive attitudes, especially based on past experiences with certain patrons. But we need to treat each day like it's a new chance to be at the library. In the instances we have to ask our patrons to leave for the day, we always try to tell them, let's try again tomorrow. I think finding the most generous interpretation will help reinforce this while increasing the opportunity to reconnect and repair librarian patron relationships after such incidences. Um, Haley attended a lot of really hard hitting sessions. Good for you, good for you. How about you, Angie? What was the best thing you learned? <clears throat> the best thing I learned probably is that you have to be you. You can't be a big, I can't be Salina. I can't be Hayes. I can't be Belleville because we're a whole different area and a whole different small library. And it was nice to hear people hear their problems of what they were having and doing and how it could relate to us. Excellent. Yes. Ashley. So I guess like one of the things that I learned, it might be simple, but we are small, but we can do mighty things. So <laughs> I mean, just because I have a population of 132 people doesn't mean that I can't do big things. Yes. Wonderful. And, and Lindsay's also clapping in the chat for you. Very wonderful um, observance. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, did you make any personal connections with other librarians attending conference? And the second part of that question has, what has been the result of that new relationship? It keeps telling me that my internet is unstable. So I'm sorry if I freeze while I'm talking, but I, I think one of my favorite. Danae, sometimes if you turn your, your camera off, it helps with that. Okay, is that better? Yes. Am I not freezing? Okay. Um, one of my favorite things was just networking with people. Like Karen said, I sat with different people um, at each meal as well well and it wasn't just um it's not just librarians from kansas these are librarians from all over the united states so it mm -hmm. was fun to get to um talk in large libraries small libraries and everything in between um and i learned some of my best stuff just from sitting around a table talking with someone <laughs> and one of the things that i uh one librarian was telling me for their computer stations they um they ordered a, I guess it's uh, like a sight impaired um, keyboard. So it's it's large keys and they're black and white. So there's large contrast. And then they took one of their screens and just enlarged the font on it. And then they had a, a computer station that's for people who have a more difficult time seeing. And so simple. I think she said the keyboard cost maybe 30 bucks. and um, you already have the other stuff and you can just change it to make it um, more usable or more user-friendly for certain uh, patrons. So just things like that. And I enjoyed hanging out with the CKLS people as well um, and the other librarians in CKLS as being a new librarian. I still, I recognize a lot of names, but now getting to put faces and uh, personalities and people with those names is fun too. Wonderful.
I gotta say, I enjoyed hanging out with all the CKLS people. I enjoyed meeting everybody and getting to know everybody better. But I did meet some um, really inter some very interesting people from Oklahoma, and a gentleman from California, who uh, maybe didn't help me so much in the library, but he had lots of interesting ideas that would never work in Kansas. But that's okay. And uh, a very nice lady from Louisiana who we were trying to convince to move to Kansas. So I don't know if that worked or not. <laughs> Ramey? Um, I very much enjoyed, I talked to all kinds of people from all over the place. And what's hilarious to me is they considered this a rule in small libraries conference, but their definition of rule in the middle of Kansas definition of rule is mm. completely different, which is always fun to me. Um, I very much enjoyed hanging out with the CKLS people because as a librarian who's been around for a long time, it's fun to meet the new people and, and talk to them and get new ideas and have the fun. And I met oh. a very interesting gal from Maricopa County, Arizona, and some of the stories she could tell were pretty. Oh, yeah. Big, big, amazing, big. actually. Big. It's like living near Kansas City, but out in the middle of the middle of Kansas. When I present at these conferences, one of the things I do is I walk off the space of the Bison Library or the Randall Library and I say, this is small. And then I talk about the real populations for you all. Mm -hmm. And I say, this is small. And then I brag on the things that you guys do. And they're like, oh, my gosh, it actually you are all very inspiring to all of them out there as well. You do amazing things. Lindsay. So um, I actually, by the time I went uh, backtrack, sorry. I had the fortune of being able to go to KLA in uh, 2022, which was right after I'd been hired. And I had the benefit of being actually adopted by the Southeast um, some of the librarians from the Southeast system. Mm -hmm. And I ran into them again at ARSL. And um, so while I don't, I didn't get the opportunity to hang out with a lot of CKLS libraries. I got to hang out with Kansas libraries regardless, but also I met a librarian from Iowa and a librarian from Ohio. And they've all gone to ARSL before. And they've, they've, so they had, it was nice being with people who had experience with conference and knew yes. the the ins and outs of what, how to pick sessions and how to work with the vendors. And uh, I think some one of the big things I learned from them was they get more out of out of the ARSL conference than they do sometimes out of their state conference. Yes. Simply because all of the sessions, all of the vendors, everyone there understands your community is smaller, your budget is smaller, your space is smaller, and that there's a lot more concessions that have to be made in order to do the big things in your small library. So that's that was the biggest takeaway from just the personal interactions that I had um, was just it's a very valuable conference if you get yes. the opportunity to go. We after I attended my first one and it was the very second one ever, I, I came back and I said, this is the best conference for our librarians, um, because even ALA would consider Salina to be a smaller library. Now, we, we they're very big and very mighty, but um, yeah, these these are our people. Uh, what did you learn that you'll share with? Oh, Haley has one here. I made brief personal connections while visiting with some other librarians, especially during meals. I think these helped everybody realize that everyone is going through it right now, in the words of one of our other librarians. I went through the business cards I received and followed those libraries on Facebook for ideas for programs. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Haley, if you've got any great ones, send a message out to um, the Google group with the good libraries to follow with good program ideas. Um, okay, what did you learn that you will share with your library board? And what I said here is that, okay, often it can be very overwhelming when you return from conference. The first time Diane Bott went off to Arsel, she was still the librarian at Bison. 
and sat next to me on the bus back and she was sad. She'd learned so many wonderful things and there was no way she could do it all. Um, and I said, well, pick three things. Uh, here I told you, pick five things you learned at conference that you would like to do and then share them with your board. And then together you pick one of those things and then you use the other things and you've got a four year plan. Um, so what did you learn that you will share with your board? Karen, go ahead. Um, one thing I learned um, was not to use Facebook so much because the algorithms are set up to um, not um, spread very much unless you unless you buy an ad. And you know we've learned over time that if you um, wait till evening um, when people are on their phones and stuff, that they seem to get better views. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, they suggested using a um, a newsletter, and that is definitely something we can implement. We have done that in the past, and for whatever reason, we quit doing it. But um, that is definitely one that we can implement and um, use in our own library. One of the um, Tuesdays that will be coming up later this year would be how to use Library Aware to create an email mm -hmm. newsletter and it's real mm -hmm. easy and very easy to set up. You need to have your patrons email addresses and mm -hmm. you collect those when they're getting their library cards. Mm -hmm. um, Haley said they're going to lean into trying more escape rooms for all ages. The panel on um, the panel, someone else already mentioned, um, broke down how to plan them. And we can combine that with the experience we have to make and find more fun challenges uh, more fun and challenging escape rooms from um, for our patrons. Yeah. Um, very exciting. So what are you going to share with your board? I keep coming back to the library of things again. And my board was very enthusiastic and gave me some great ideas. Um, the library has access to multiple homeschool families from, from different co-ops and things like that. And through their ideas, we now have a spiral binder and a laminator and some things that can be used in library that have been very popular. Wow, nice. And I can honestly tell you, if I hadn't have been to that and brought it home and was all enthusiastic to my board, um, I would have never thought about a spiral binder. No, me either. me either. So not the comb binder, a true spiral binder. And I think the best thing I brought back was enthusiasm. Oh, wonderful. Um, one of the reasons that... Um, I argued really hard for um, CE money because librarians used to have to earn money. Um, and when Harry came on, my predecessor, we decided to give libraries money for CE. And I was a real firm and staunch advocate for that because there is nothing better for a librarian to come back excited, energized, full of great ideas to the library, it breathes new life into the library and into the community. And I think you guys are, are really good examples of that. Um, Katrina, what are you gonna share with your board? I know you must have certainly shared the things you learned about a friend's group. I did, yes. <laughs> yes. I shared all that with them. And... Wanted, her friend's group wanted to monopolize her time as a director. Yes. <laughs> um uh well one would like the library spaces I shared with them kind of my plans one thought it was a great idea because what I, what I want to do is move our computers and kind of make a little teen area mm -hmm. um just for the kids um to hang out and then our children's room we just don't have a lot of room in there so I found some things that maybe we can hang on our walls and be interactive that way so trying to find different ways to use our space that we have um so and Katrina then also has, has a big room that's been broken up into spaces 
Whereas some of the other problems that libraries have is they just have one huge space and they kind of, they start to get you tunnel vision-y. It's like, that's where the children's room is. It's always been there. It always <laughs> has to be there. Um, it doesn't. Things can shake up and move around, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, and um, I had seen it before the conference, but I had always wanted to cover one for mending. And so I got my board on um, the idea of that, and I'm hoping to um, do a program with that too, where the kids can make their own books with it. So I'm hoping to use it more in just mending. Nice. Nice. Um, Angie, what are you going to take back to your board? Well, one of the things I took back to the board was, of course, the excitement that I had from coming back. But uh, one of the things we're working on is new programming, trying to get different programs in. We, the Scania Library hasn't hosted a lot of programs, mm -hmm. so we're trying to figure out what the community wants. And right now we're working on maybe having a, there's a local group of individuals who play music and uh, having them here in the spring. So we'll see. Exciting. Exciting. Um, the Logan Library, people come and play pitch at the library, and then they have a potluck. Oh. And their town is small enough, it works really, really well for them. And then they have the community health nurse come once a month and do a different topic, and she does blood pressure checks and things like that. There's so many ideas out there. It's, it's a, I tell you, there has never been a better time in the world to be a programming librarian than there is right now. There's just so many wonderful ideas and so many great resources available. Um, Karen, what will you share with your board? Um, I, I did share the some of the different things with our literacy kits and um, what I learned about Facebook as far as the algorithms and um, Wonderful. We did talk about the snacks a little bit, um, but um, we aren't we aren't doing that. But yeah, it was overall it was really good. I did meet a librarian from Illinois. It was interesting. She thought Dodge City was the only place to go in Kansas for <laughs> entertainment. So, <laughs> well, Miss Kitty and you know Marshall <laughs> Dillon. Um, here's our last question: yeah. What observations do you have? And you've kind of all touched on this about the similarities or differences between small and rural libraries in Kansas versus small and rural libraries elsewhere. I'll say um, I learned that most of us, there is never enough money or people or space or time usually <laughs> for all, all the amazing things that we want to do. Um, and that there are a lot more solo or one to two mm -hmm. um, libraries than what you would think there are. And that librarians are really creative people. Um, I enjoyed getting to, I don't consider myself a super creative person. So I like mm -hmm. to rub shoulders with creative people because uh, I like to use their ideas. <laughs> Yes. So I'm good at implementing other people's ideas, not so much coming up with my own, but um, I, I, we're usually always a lot more alike than we are different. I think the longer you live, the more you realize that. So um, Thank you. I, I just really enjoyed the time. Um, Haley said that there's a universal issue. Programming that works is very much dependent on a library specific community. As in small towns, you have limited niches or interests to discover and cater to. Um, Lindsay, do you want to read this out loud or do you want me to do it? I can read it. I just didn't want to disrupt the flow of conversation. Go ahead. Um, so this is something else I shared with my board aside from everything else, but it is on a more serious note. Um, the ALA executive director, uh, Deborah Caldwell Stone, was at ARSEL this year, and so we had the benefit of hearing from her and getting her um, perspective on a lot of challenges that our libraries are facing um, legally and politically 
Um, and so some of the things that I communicated to my board and were reinforced from that session was that um, as a public library, our responsibility to the First Amendment is to provide the public access to information, entertainment, and resources. Um, we are considered a limited public forum, allowing us to determine what behaviors are inappropriate as long as we are reasonable and equitable or and equally apply to all visitors. Mm -hmm. um, and most importantly and urgently, this session reinforced my intentions to review and revise our existing policies, including our collection de development policy, uh, it, which includes our material reconsideration policy and our code of conduct policy and photography and filming on library property. It was just really nice to hear from an actual legal representative who knows the law and knows what's going on to get clarification on what what we as a library can do mm -hmm. and what our responsibility is and which is pretty much full stop we provide access to information yes. and that's the that's the key thing and i just wanted to to share that um and i communicated that to my board so. i very very much enjoy listening to her speak she is a, a brilliant lawyer and um has a real keen insight into library as well. One of the um, services that CKLS offers, but we don't have it published anywhere that I'm aware of, is that we will do a policy audit for your library. Um, you send us what you've got and we will run through them and we will make suggestions. We will um, come to your library board and present them and say, we've got to cross this out because it's illegal or whoopsie doodle, you didn't get this part in there. Um, Danae is laughing because Liz had Liz had her in, initiation trip with me to um, lacrosse. And uh, it, is, it is something that we really enjoy doing, but we've got a lot of experience with it. You and your board are never alone and you never should have to start from scratch on these policies. We're definitely here to help. And it's something that we enjoy very much. So You've got another CKLS resource there. Um, we've got about eight minutes, it looks like. Does anybody else want to chime in on anything else? I was just going to say that uh, one of the differences of our live for us versus other libraries is they don't have CKLS to back them up. They don't have anybody to back them up. We have a huge resource with you guys. Thank you. And she's a new librarian. Um, Patty put something in the comment about um, Deborah Caldwell Stone. She said she stopped to visit with Patty and some of you at conference. And she reminded us that being small is not an excuse for not having policies. It will not protect you from book challenges and that all libraries should report challenges to the ALA Office of Intellectual Freedom. They track those and they have for decades um, and, uh, yeah, it, we need to, um, pay careful attention to that. Yes, we don't, we don't send librarians to conference so that you can come back and, and brag about CKLS, that's for sure. But it is something that you start to notice, um, once you've been elsewhere. Patty, why don't you tell us about ARSL? next year or ARSL as we've called it for years and now they're trying to get away from that, but it's okay. Hello, um, the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, the ARSL conference will be held in Springfield, Massachusetts. The first the Western week of, side. The first week of September. Um, it does move around um, it, the West, the Central and the East and sometimes the South, but they have a little trouble with what Central and South sometimes because it's obvious what West is, it's obvious what East is, but we know that Central is hard to define. So, um, so it um, does move around. The conference that we had was the um, rollover from 2020. So it will actually be back in the Central area in 2027, which is sooner than it should have been because we shouldn't be till 2028. So um, we don't yet know where. Um, no, and I would guess their idea of central is going to be- Illinois. Um, Missouri, India, and uh, um, possibly Kentucky, because I they don't, they don't know what the South is exactly. Um, the 
there are ways to get involved with ARSL. Uh, if you became a member to go to conference, your membership will be expiring soon, but do follow them because they do have some free um, training sessions that occur. And one of the my favorite things that is associated with ARSL is the solo happy hours. These occur on the first Thursday of each month at 6 p.m. They show up on the ARSL listserv and also on their website. It's run by um, a lady, Bree Drapa from um, Connecticut and um, Chelsea from Missouri, Illinois, or Iowa. Um, and they uh, basically give up their time to do this. And I attend about every other month. And most recently, we spent an hour, about an hour and a half, talking about reader's advisory for small libraries. This next month in March, we will be talking about strategic planning for small libraries. Mm. And sometimes they bring a guest in. Sometimes, usually I'm the only consultant there. So I'm the one throwing cool stuff in the chat from all of you. Again, we're always, we're always bragging. Uh, bragging about you all. And so, um, so there um, are people from all sizes of rural and small libraries. But um, like you said, Danae, um, in that world, you're considered solo because you're the only director and you only have a few hours. Um, and some of you, like Ashley and Ramey and in this room, are truly the only. That's, mm -hmm. That is truly that, that definition of solo. I'm going to um, pop in real quick, Patty. If you um, would like to continue your ARSL membership, that is actually something that you can use some of your CKLS continuing education money for. I, I can't say enough how excited I am to hear how you all had the opportunity to see, um, meet others, take the time to um, let yourself out because it's very hard to be vulnerable around strangers. Um, but it was very exciting to, when we had the opportunities to interact with all of you at meals mm -hmm. and we, we just had the best time. I came home feeling so good from conference and, and frankly, you know, I'm always on a high after presenting, but being able to be with all of you and hearing the things you were excited about was so inspirational to us. So um, this is Tuesdays with CKLS for February. For March, um, we're going to go a different way. <laughs> we're doing something called adult story time. Now, some of you might have a picture of that being as adult at the senior center story time or adult story time like... Um, like we do kids story time, but um, my friend and former colleague will be presenting on her version of adult story time. She takes uh, the opportunity to take story time to the local bar and she reads some books that um, um, there might not be for everybody is what I heard Diane just say, but I think you will be um, excited and inspired to hear the things that she has to say and how she got a whole new um, opportunity uh, to bring new patrons to her library because these are not people that would have normally been walking in the door. So that will be on the March 19th. And then that following week, um, will be a program workshop here at CKLS, and that will be from 9.30 to 3. And Diane has been working very hard. We're um, stepping out of the summer library world, and we're talking about programming in general. And you can see Diane's smiley face. She is very excited. And uh, she's been working very hard, and, um, and I've been her assistant on this project. <laughs> we are going to um, reschedule, but the photography made easy has been rescheduled. And, and that is May um, the 6th. That will be coming up. And that will be May the 6th. And then so that um, is not uh, your normal Tuesday day, but it is a it is going to be here. And we're going to record that one as well. And then um, just a date to put on your calendar. The CKLS full system board meeting will be May 22nd in um, Russell. Russell at the Fossil Inn Convention Center, the Dole Spectre Center, where we had the meeting last May. So those are some things to get on your calendar. Be looking for the dates for the Explorer sessions. I'm working on those right now. Um, your CKLS staff has been busy behind the scenes. Uh, we want to compliment you all on getting your annual reports finished. 
it took some challenges, but you all got there. And um, we saw so many of you at those annual reports trainings and at budget trainings. And so we've missed your faces, but those that we've seen have been uh, such a great joy for us. And um, it's it's been a hard winter already and it's only February, but we just want to thank you for all the great work that you're doing and um, keep keep it up. And we are here for any of your any of our library related work or need. We had a couple of questions or comments in the chat that weren't really about what this was about. Um, uh, Amy said with Facebook, share your community things and share on the community page and you'll get a lot more traffic. Um, you can move things around and find space. I know Barb asked a question about seeds. Oh gosh, this was a very chatty chat this time. She um, asked how they were stored because sometimes if you don't get the temperature right, right. they don't carry over. Yes. Um, I'm not sure, Barb. I, I um, am not a seed keeper and um, it's not a program that I've ever done, but I know that um, some of our libraries are already uh, involved in that. If you want to know more, you could send a message out to the Google group and um, find out what librarians are already doing. Thank you all for being here. We do have four conference grants this year. Um, if you get a conference grant, you can't get one every year, but um, those of you who didn't get a conference grant, you may want to think out about um, attending ARSL in Massachusetts. The conference grant pays for your registration, your room and board, and your transportation. As I always say, it's a full ride. Will the chat be saved? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this one's so valuable. There was so much wonderful good stuff in it. I'm going to stop you the all. recording. Yes.